off box mining live here today it is monday monday the 28th of september and as we near september markets are slowly recovering so finally we saw lots and lots of recovery especially in the old coin space this weekend some more yield farms going up as well so i'll talk a little bit about it i actually did so this weekend um i tried not to do crypto as much as i can to just get a proper break but i couldn't because there's still quite a few yield farms up that i did want to touch and migrate to so i'll talk a little bit about everything that's happening on the yield farming and everything scene big shout out to everyone coming on chat we also want to do a small update on the whole kucoin hack so kucoin obviously in the last stream if you guys watched it we we're talking about the fact that kucoin got hacked for 150 million plus us dollars worth of cryptocurrencies that was not fun um obviously we made a few jokes about it because um you know the way they did the live stream and explained everything the guy stared blankly in silence the ceo of kucoin stared blank blankly in silence at his computer for 20 minutes before explaining to us what happened with the hack but he did confirm the hack he confirmed all the timings of the hack and recently the latest update on this is that after the hack has been announced KuCoin did work with a lot of projects to suspend the coins related to the hack. So whether it's USDT, we saw something with Orion, we saw something with Velo as well. They've all, all these affected coins that were hacked and were stolen. Well, the projects themselves pretty much found ways to either lock it or remove it or denounce it. So that's quite interesting it depends on how the projects are set up and how the tokens are set up but that seems to be the case right now where there's a mad scramble to kind of mitigate the damage done by the hack and this also leads to a situation where it doesn't really drastically affect the overall cryptocurrency ecosystem sure 100 million 50 million dollar hack is quite a bit and everyone was afraid that there was going to be a huge dump where the hacker can dump these coins on the open market and drastically lower the price of other cryptocurrencies but this time you know well, luckily for us mitigations were done and it didn't happen so anyways <laughs> that's pretty much it we got a few uh chats there were quite a few kind of like big pushes of uh, how would i say this uh yes yo farming was going crazy there's flamingo which does does something it does um, vaults there was we we're talking a little bit about um what else is there sake 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 swap which does obviously swaps we we're also talking about a few of the liquidity mine not liquid quotation mining but also of course this weekend we saw a few mining for the sake of mining projects which i don't really like unfortunately but there yeah we saw a few comments about core and we saw a few comments about orb Ooh, yeah we're going into territory where i feel like there's more demand for speculation and these developers are fueling speculation but in the end if the project doesn't bring in external sources of income i would say that this would borderline be closer to a pyramid scheme where you just buy it for the sake of buying it and in the end it doesn't have any functionality so i'll be a little bit watchful careful there i, I wouldn't be early too early to judge because obviously you know see vaults core promise that they'll do stuff but i think we're nearing to this region where all of a sudden there's this desire this need to you know speculate and i think i'm more okay with that now like before i'll be like we're pitch boards let's kill all these speculators and you know let's stop gambling on blockchain but you know people like to gamble it's just but at least as long as you're honest about it and long as that's you know what you tell people that this is, feels like a gambling project it is a gambling project that's okay anyways that's pretty much the mini rant for this morning uh we got a question about illegal haircuts when will i interview another illegal haircut very likely tomorrow very very likely a lot of a lot of projects are contacting me and because i'm like you know what let's explore this space a bit more i feel like the nft deep talk was super super helpful i mean if you guys haven't watched it yet already uh it's a non-fungible token discussion with yat su from uh, he's from Rev Sand. Um, he also his company, um, Animoca Brands, were early investors into almost every single NFT-based game project. So that includes Axie Infinity and also includes 
uh what was it again um crypto kitties they had involvement in as well it's um they were actually the distributors in asia for crypto kitties so but it was very enlightening to talk and also play the devil's advocate this is something i might do a little bit more as well on the chats where i take the negative view and let the project take the positive view and just tackle them with hard questions i feel like that's gonna be the fun part so yes illegal haircuts coming soon guys coming soon oh my god so yeah let's do a very quick um recap as well so yeah that video was pretty cool and just in my most commercial voice before i start i always like to tell you about my podcast and yes i'm trying to upload as much as possible to the podcast and this week i definitely promise you guys stuff is coming on the podcast we also have a talk with don song from oasis labs the reason for the podcast is because it is so much easier to listen to on the go so bought bitcoin out of the box just search for it on telegram um, not telegram on was it, apple podcast google podcast every single podcast like spotify everything you can listen to it on the go in your car when you're driving to work or when you're going for a run like nowadays when i go for a run i love listening to podcasts so anyways and check that out indeed anyways uh let's we'll go very quickly on the market then we will go in we'll talk a little bit about everything that's going on obviously everyone's like talking oh why don't you talk about all this yield farming stuff yfe core and everything guys calm calm down calm down we'll get to it we'll get to it i think it's just like uh but you can tell you can tell which communities are the most active like and most which communities are the most aggressive on the live chats where like there's some communities like oh you gotta talk about this coin today my, my coin and then you're like anyways guys uh well where there's a lot lots going on and obviously um you know a lots of fun i'll answer this question very quickly i think it's kind of um kind of related to all the nft stuff we're talking about lewis says what are your thoughts on um, social slash personal tokens like alex whale etc i think this is the biggest bogus play in the space actually um like for me right for me i've done some box mining tokens i don't want to be a hypocrite here but i gave them out for free i don't want to fund anything i just want to give them out for free if you guys enjoy it, like to collect something like that and we give it out for free oh every monday stream actually so uh yeah that's the way it works right like i felt like that's there's no need for me to raise money via a personal token i think it's the frothiest I, most unnecessary space ever i mean it doesn't mean ownership of a person or doesn't mean you can get a free skype call with the person i mean like come on right but um i feel like there's no need to speculate over that especially something like like the nft space is getting very frothy that's what i kind of feel like so i feel like we need to achieve something substantial but yet again with the nfts um discussion here you know um yet also made an argument that if you're a rich patreon right if you're incredibly rich and you want to speculate and you want the space to grow and you have money to lose then sure yeah personal tokens digital art and in fact the um, the, the quality of digital art going out right now on variables is actually increasing so i'd have to say you know what it is true it's rich patrons who um funded a lot of the art movements etc over time and digital art collectibles exactly the same but for me as going into it as a personal if um investment perspective because obviously i make a huge amount of cap like i deploy a lot of capital and investments in the cryptocurrency space it is not something like i don't i'm not a rich patreon i'm here to you know profit <laughs> like like it's been pretty honest about that too and um that's an area of speculation i don't want to speculate on because any personal token you're really playing against the house um you know if it's some alex token or not in fact i think alex was also caught being part of few but anyways that's my two cents um okay so that's pretty much it uh let's take a quick look at the market we have recovered slightly so slightly 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 so over this week there was a bounce there was a 
quite a good bounce actually. So if we zoom out to the last seven days here, it's very quick market narrative on what's going on. I mean, do 14 days actually. So during this time, there was a dump um, coming up to Thursday, especially like there was a lot of negativity as well surrounding few. If you guys remember, that was a pump and dump attempt by a few uh, influencers in the space, and especially a lot of OG kind of Ethereum people got caught up in this attempt at pump and dump, but they got caught and uh, their chat logs were all posted and it literally people said, uh, we need people to dump on. Oh, that was disgusting. But anyways, after the disgusting play, it's very clear that crypto has a very short memory, which is great, I guess. Good and bad. But anyways, we bounced back. You know, now we've kind of forgot all about the few incident. It's no longer relevant. You know, crypto has a... It's kind of funny, right? Like, I thought that would have a longer impact, negative impact, especially when kind of core OG people got kind of caught for trying to execute a pump and dump. But, um, you know... Crypto, it's just like, oh, it's pretty normal, you know? So yeah, we bounced back, we're pretty good. That's kind of the narrative here. We're, we're hitting around this kind of resistance at around 360 level. And this is where I feel like we're gonna be in a zone where short term was still iffy. I think it's like the bullish momentum is still not there yet. But in the kind of like, the, if you zoom out for say, say something like six months to 12 months, Crypto is going to have a huge impact soon, especially with the uncertainty in the political climate, especially because the, the amount of money being printed in this space, in this world is astronomical. And the amount of political uncertainty is also astronomical right now. So that's why in the macro perspective, both Bitcoin, Ethereum, the main cryptocurrencies and the whole space has a huge amount of promise. That's why I'm very, very bullish in this space and this is why i'm also like you know i took my break last week and i'm doubling down this week to just re work really hard during this time to find where the value is because i feel like you know like um, all of a sudden if you look at all the tension surrounding TikTok or whatnot like this this kind of war between us and china be it a tr we want to call it a trade war sure but now it's rapidly escalating to a tech war and this is going to lead to a situation where fintech becomes very very important to deal with issues that are being you know kind of sanctioned so it's a certain point where you know we have the u.s freezing bank accounts of chinese officials we have china also retaliating and doing the same i mean already china has a big limitation on how much a person can take out of china so previously this was fifty thousand dollars where a chinese person like you know they want to travel abroad they want to move some money overseas the allowance is fifty thousand us dollars well that amount has stayed the same, but China this year has rapidly clamped down on attempts for kind of like a, a proxy send. Because very, very rich billionaires in China, you know, China has like the largest, world's largest population of billionaires, they need to move money out. But before previously, what they're doing is they're getting their friends and family and saying, yo, look, you know, I want to use your quota. Now the government's clamping very, very hard on that. They're also clamping very hard on cryptocurrency OTC. So it's a very interesting climate right now where they're clamping down on OTC. But, but the key thing here is they're launching both DCEP and they were very, very pro ethereum last week so anyways it's a very interesting situation where i feel like they have to engage in this because if there's a fear of the chinese losing control or getting like there was even this risk right now like this fear right now that china might be banned from the swift system and for further sanctions to be implemented banning china from sending crypto so from sending fiat currencies overseas anyways i feel like this this whole political climate is boiling up to something where a decentralized transfer of value becomes extremely powerful and this is what led to a lot of the discussion last week too you know last week i featured and i showed you guys there were articles you know thanks Dolby for posting articles and thank you matt for posting articles on this but there was a concerted effort by chinese media to say jami which is cryptocurrencies is 
like the number one leading investment asset this year. So it's like it's on CCTV, like national state sponsored TV in China. So the state's going for it. Look at the, the, the those amazing Bitcoins and Ethereum, the Litecoins in the background. I love this. <laughs> but, you know, like the, just to teach general public what it is. Right. So they have these physical coins in the background, like even Litecoins back here. But even ripple you see that even even ripples back there ripple dash that's like that's kind of cool but anyways they're they're featuring this on state tv and now we have like all this political drama so i think in the macro scott um view this is very very bullish for the whole cryptocurrency space so long as we get through this like temporary uncertainty that we see right now especially with how rapid DeFi grew obviously profit taking pullbacks are natural not financial advice but my take on this is that i'm I kind of a lot more bullish than ever on this whole situation and then not just bitcoin but also gold as well i think i've been thinking a little bit about kind of diversifying out of more fiat i think you know you know with me i've, I've always had a a fiat runway so in case anything goes bad obviously you know, being someone that's responsible, I feel like, you know, a lot of people in crypto, they're like, oh, go all in on crypto 100%. That's not for me because unfortunately, I still have to pay for rent. I'm renting the studio. I still need to have fiat access. But I'm actually really honestly considering to reduce the amount of fiat I have right now and convert that either to even more Bitcoin or some gold as well. That's the kind of like, that's how bullish I am right now. So, you know, there you go. And okay, so that's kind of the current take on this on the overall markets. And obviously, if you look at the past 24 hours, we got our weave up there again. We got Nest coming up. And I was telling you guys about Nest farming as well. And not just Nest, but Nest has a bunch of pairs, almost like the way Uniswap works, like how Uniswap has a pool for everything. But Nest is basically a protocol that's an oracle. It gives blockchain basically ethereum blockchain the ability to know what a price is so nest itself functions for the ETH usdt pair where you can start and do quote mining for it and also for if and of why feed it was a pair which worked very well for me last week so nest you can yield farm this no problem and it's going up we also have swipe thorchain going up Data network, everyone seems to be talking about it. Cardano, engine coins up a bit as well. OMG. So yeah, this week is not bad. I mean, we also have a few losers. Let's look at what the losers are this week. We have Yearn and DeFi money losing. So DeFi is still, you know, it's pulling back. That's what was the narration narrative is. Um, it's pulling back a little bit the past 24 hours. And let me look at the seven days as well. Yeah, so seven days, kind of a similar, similar pattern. DeFi pulling back a little bit while its other projects are taking over. So that's kind of the current case on everything. We got a good comment as well coming in from Ender Wiggins says, okay, did Peter Schiff give you drugs over the weekend for the gold thing? You know, I think they're not mutually exclusive. I feel like, um, you know, the Peter Schiff debate over oh, gold versus Bitcoin, you know, it's been raging for the longest time, but they have different uses. All right. Gold as a store value, it's a physical asset and Bitcoin being a digital asset, but gold as a store value, it's more kind of like, you know, real, you can put it into your you know, vault, like I can feel it, but it's not very movable. You want to try to move a block of gold, a kilogram of gold, you know, good luck, right? And it can get stolen very easily. With Bitcoin, it's actually much different. So I feel like they're very, very different in terms of how they're used as a store value. So I don't actually view them as mutually exclusive. That's my two cents on this. I think like, you know, I own both um, a tiny nugget. I think I showed you guys, right? I own a tiny nugget of gold, like tiny, tiny nugget. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like they're mutually exclusive. That is the case. All right, so um, that's kind of the case right now. So I feel like there was a small pullback for DeFi a little bit, a wee little bit. But overall, the markets are still strong. Like uh, the bounce happened much faster than I thought it was. It's not the strongest bounce in the world, all right? But <laughs> it is a bounce nonetheless.
we'll talk a little bit about the coupon case. I think that's pretty much the biggest um, thing. So I pretty much summarized everything, to be honest. We uh, actually, there was also the Ma Magic Crypto VR conference over on this weekend. But oh, also, by the way, shout outs. We actually have to do one thing. So whilst you guys are all here and whilst you guys are all smashing the likes, let's open up the Telegram group again. So we'll get the Telegram group up. You guys know that I have one of the best Telegram groups up available and a lot of people have been asked me to join it. So joining Telegram group can only happen on every Monday. We have basically closed off the group for new entries, mostly because we want a higher level of discussion there. So we want less people blatantly showing their referral links and just spamming stuff. We want a good honest real discussion with real valuable information being provided so that's telegram group it's absolutely free to join but we only only allow entry on monday so that's the rule right now so like today right now that's the only time pretty much people can join so i'm opening the group up but just remember guys one thing with the telegram group is that it is extremely um it's it's well maintained by all the admins and everyone that's kind of doing this for free and volunteering. So it's it's very much a group effort, but do remember if you blatantly spam referral links, if you ask like, like the, the rule for the Telegram group is you contribute before you take from the table. So if you want to take some information or ask other members about information, do make sure you contribute first. I think this is like a works by a give take model. You have to give before you take from the table. Um, so we definitely appreciate new members, but we only open this up very exclusively during this period of time for anyone watching online um, for, you know, very pe people who are dedicated in this space. So anyways, I opened it up. It's, um, it's on the chat right now so welcome you're welcome to join you welcome to chat and have a good time just grab a beer and just go and enjoy have a good discussion here not too shilly you know just just the right amount just the right amount and with a lot of actual real valuable information being provided that is the core and that is key to this channel all right so um <laughs> Kenny Diamond says, hit that like button. God damn it, boy. Let's do it, guys. Hit that like button. It really does help the channel. I really don't like begging for this a lot, but it does really help. Hit that like button. Smash that up. Pump it up. Um, and we got Cat that's close. Yes, says, I troll spa show on other Telegram groups, but when I go to the box mining group, I straighten up. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way. That's the way, cowboy. All right, so um, some questions and answers. Ooh, lots of questions and discussions today. Yeah? So well, let's do a quick questions and discussions uh, whilst we're kind of chilling here. I feel like weekend was relatively chill, to be honest. Um, other than the big KuCoin hack, which you covered. I, I, I would say just on a KuCoin cat hack, poor guy. You know, like we made fun of him a little bit. Uh, poor Johnny. He was like just staring at the screen. <laughs> But it's all in good fun. We, we we saw him basically stare at the screen and explain to us the hack. He was pretty sad and upset. And um, I I did um I did bully him a bit. So on the KuCoin chat, you know, this is the CEO of KuCoin. He did try to explain what was going on. And uh, we had the um we had the someone make an NFT and sell it for ten. Eve man stares at computer for twenty minutes, and someone actually did make an NFT, which is crazy. So, and we also had some really good comments because, like, while he was doing this, uh, <laughs> we had some best captions for this. So, I think um, he was staring at us and doing talking about this, and he was like, I think one of the best comments was like, let's see, oh, uh, how do I turn off the server? Man, you guys are ingenious. I love this. I I just shit my pants live. Poor Johnny. Poor poor Johnny. He really drew the short stick by just hosting this conference. And someone I also pointed out this is the Ku Queen's head and shoulders. You can see the head and shoulders formation happening behind him. <laughs> almost, almost. I just need to move the camera a little bit. It'll be perfect. And then I think there was another one. Uh, I just shit my coins live. Uh, someone's. Uh, Funds are seifu. Funds are not seifu. I love you guys, man. I love you guys. It was just so funny. And it's gone. Well, technically, <laughs> like this one, it's liquidity locked. 
<laughs> anyways man it was too funny it was too funny over the weekend it was um it was a lot of stress obviously and then um you know that was too funny so we we do have a lot of um discussion right now on uh random shit coins i think this is a situation where this weekend definitely so just looking at the discussion right now so people were asking about uh <laughs> so basically basically people are shilling or sharing new gems out there who sharing gems this is like a, such a great discussion i'm almost tempted to like have a discussion group where it's just like pure share gems let's share gems guys um but there is a lot of need for speculation right now. I feel like the the whole market wants to speculate more, especially with unit swap prices going down. So ETH gas station, rather not Uniswap, but trading on Uniswap is a little bit cheaper with Ethereum gas prices going down. Like finally we're hitting 60. Oh my God, guys. I was like, what a, what a relief is that, right? Hitting 60. So now a transaction on Uniswap is like, what? Five, six dollars rather than 10? But anyways, so with gas prices going down, obviously everyone's talking. So um, new gems, people were talking about core or orbs, or I think there was another one, FL, um, another wifey fork or uni with two eyes. Um, here's my take on it. So it's highly speculative and there was a period of time and, and that still includes right now where I generally avoid touching stuff like that because right because even though it could have the potential of going down up but it can have a drastic potential to go down very quickly especially if it's just been mined and especially if the supply is very low people love it speculators love it when the supplies are very low that means it's very pumpable but at the same time if a huge member of a community like that dumps that can cause a giant giant red arrow so that's my take on everything here if you guys like ultra speculative stuff we can have a chat group for it but at the same time, I feel like a lot of people are going to be burnt by this. And being a more public channel here, I definitely don't want to like, you know, condone a lot of this stuff. Especially if, like, say for example, Orb, Orb had a very generous referral credit of around ten percent, and something like that is like almost borderline BitConnect, where it relies on a very strong referral, you know, sharing and all this like. You know social aspect to boost up but in boost up the project but in terms of actual value does it really provide much is now the biggest question so we actually did a ban on orb discussion and referral links over the weekend because it was just getting too toxic too many people posting up referral links it's like i know you guys want to make money but let's calm down a little bit uh we don't want another big connect situation going on so i feel like there is a lot of lack of legitimacy um brewing up in the farming space and that's pretty normal like we saw a lot of pull rugs happen especially like recently there's this like statistic almost that like almost 60 percent of new coins listed on uniswap now are pull rugs where you know this term is becoming so common because people experience it for the first time and speaking of pull rugs i just want to talk a little bit about trust swap as well because a lot of people were like criticizing trust swap for basically um, a project using them and then pulling the rug and this is actually very very true in crypto so i made a post here basically the situation was that a project called HashDAO used TrustSwap to lock team funds but they still managed to pull liquidity from uniswap and this is a situation where unfortunately there are so many ways for a project to scam and a, and it's impossible to protect against every sort of scam in this space so right now it's like i was saying yeah so they they managed to still scam by pulling liquidity and that's something else that we have to watch for in that stuff that's why is liquidity locked is one of the biggest questions the first questions people ask in the space but even beyond liquidity locks even if liquidity is locked a project can still exit scam by having a terrible product or just nonsense around the white paper right now it's a time where due diligence is absolutely core so i feel like it's a situation where in crypto there is no middle ground where you can kind of understand what's going on like either you fully understand it and you figure out how you want to deal it with like deal with all the speculation yourself or you just avoid it so crypto i feel like there's no middle ground where you can kind of understand crypto and you want to play around and you want to make money but at the same time if you don't fully understand it 
uh, good luck getting wrecked because there's just way a million ways for a project to scam right now and um there's another scam over this weekend where um a farming project with no liquidity lock managed to pull and steal everyone's tokens that were yield farming um this is happening guys like this is absolutely happening um like farming scams are the next top thing because farmers are rich right um farmers had a very very good run starting with the first wifey one wifey two all that stuff all this value given to farmers so farmers are very very well off farmers started gambling obviously you saw the whole level of degeneracy from these farmers but at the same time right now there are scams directly targeting farmers you just have to be very very careful about that because it will end badly it will end very badly so just be watch careful for that we definitely want to watch out for so yet again it's a situation with the trust swap the hashed out situation it was a situation where trust swap the software actually did what it did it locked up the team funds but then obviously the team attacked from another angle by pulling liquidity from the liquidity pool and this is going to happen also like farming projects farming projects can steal your coin um, especially if they're a fork of sushi there is a migrator clause in there and the migrator allows people to directly steal anything that you're stealing staked on there it's it's designed so that you can migrate liquidity from one exchange to the other but you can also migrate from one exchange directly into the developer's pockets it's the magic of it. it it means that there needs to be a lot of due diligence and that's something that's great about the telegram channel too uh, i'll talk about it last time and i'll send the, the link the last time as well here where yeah the the group uh managed group uh, group type the group were pretty good at describing kind of what's the risks involved with everything here. And I think that's kind of key, <laughs> beyond kind of key. We also got Stefan N. Thank you. Welcome to Team Crypto. Welcome from joining this channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that support. It really does help. We also have uh, Steven Nagel says, uh, thank you so much for your donation. He's talking about Kobo. There's so many NFT projects over this weekend, and I think the NFT debate is heating up, but it's still one of the frothiest space around in the space. So just be careful for that. Uh, my two cents. Um, so Magic Turtle says, are you talking about Core? Yes, I, I did a blanket statement on Core and ARB and all those stuff. I feel like it's pure speculation at this point, beyond pure speculation. It's like it's pure gambling at this point, um, unfortunately. But you know what? Some people love it. Um, KS says, um, Blackbox Mining, you said you have no sympathy for stupid crypto peeps giving their coin to scams. Now you're worried about farmers. They deserve to get scammed like the rest. Obviously, KS is a little bit salty, shaking, shaking hands. Damn those farmers for making money in this space. Damn those farmers. They need to be scammed too. They need to suffer like the rest. I'm just saying, man, I'm not, I'm not taking, you know, sides. I think you guys pretty much know I'm apolitical. I'm, you know, I have no political um, allegiances right now. Right now, it's about purely about profit, I think. Profit, but ethical profit, right? So, yeah, I'm just warning people that this is happening. I don't really care, um, you know, if they're farmers, if they're people. And a lot of times, the worst part about all this is the people who are OG, right? The OG farmers they can take a hit but people who really get angry are all the newbie farmers like they have no idea what they're doing and then they're just like oh i heard this is fun i heard this is interesting let me go in and then and then they got scammed and then they're like oh farming's a scam I'm like i have so many like i've seen so many of these comments like oh box mining supporting all this scrap this farming stuff you know you all lose money no no you just have to be smart about it you just have to be like a little bit more intelligent Hey, right? that's the that's the beauty of crypto. You gotta be smart, right? And a typical example for this would be anything with the native currency. So when you're farming, let's say I'm I'm just gonna throw sake out there, swap out there. So sake swap they offer a bunch of pools, obviously, and uh, some of the pools are you know much safer than others. Not all pools are created equal. Let me just let me just unlock my wallet here and um, enter this and show you guys a little bit by what I mean by this. But when entering pools and when you're yield farming, one of the things you have to watch out for is all these projects are going to tempt you with insane rewards. And 
a lot of times the smaller the reward the the more kind of attention you should pay to it so let me just load this for a second i was actually on binance smart chain so so if you can see here something like dai sake right this includes the native coin sake and if sake goes down right if it just kind of plummets and it's done that in the past you're going to lose money very very fast not financial advice but it's pretty much just a fact right there so let's just say for example sake when initially when i was first launched when the hype was going when everyone's hyping about sake it had an insane amount of value let's just say like last 30 days oh in fact it was like it peaked at around three dollars at a certain point so a lot of people what they did is they saw these high rewards these high apys and during that period of time you have to remember it wasn't just a thousand apy it was around thirty thousand apy really insane that means like you can literally like 10 percent get 10 percent extra coins per day or something ridiculous like that so these are what people refer to as kind of pool twos now so these are pool twos they contain sake but what happens if sake just plummets like that Right. This is the biggest risk. This is where the videos on impermanent loss. Um, I've done videos on impermanent loss. That's when they come in because when that token price really hits a shitter, when it really dumps like crazy, you're gonna lose everything. And that's how a lot of farmers ended up losing a lot of cryptocurrency. But what happens here is that you, if you avoid all these ones, so you avoid the nice flashy lights, but then you start scrolling down a little bit to coins that you already do own. So something like if you already have UMA and do UMA ETH, that might be interesting. Or if you have a little bit of say, let's see, I'm just scrolling down a little bit further. You have USDT ETH, right? You, you get 73% APY. It's it's, it's not game changing but it's still quite a lot but this this um, pair is much more um stable mostly because well it's ethereum and usdt so one of them is a stable coin one of them is ethereum so this is where like where i start moving on where like i scroll down to the bottom of the pile and be like okay look this is what coins i have this is what uh, what amount of risk i want to take um it's all tuned for myself and that's where i go in so this is a situation where you have no exposure to sake whatsoever so you know if it goes all the way down to the gutter to zero you know i don't lose anything right all i've lost is my time right i just put my coins there deposited there sure i made some sake but it's all profit right i got it for free technically anyways right all i did was i put some of my coins there and um, saved it there and that's the biggest difference right now i think like a lot of people they don't understand uh, my uh, yield farming yield farming is a great way to gain a little bit of passive income also a little great way to uh, for a project to bootstrap itself right it's like all about encouraging people to come over provide liquidity to a certain pair and the reason why they do this they provide this incentive is because they want to promote their sake swap right sake swap is their own exchange so they want to people to promote and provide liquidity there so yeah and it's not just purely depositing coins to it it's that there's a functionality there too you're providing liquidity to the pair anyways long story but anyways that's that's kind of the strategy with mining wins where you don't go into the obvious ones like you don't go like these ones you will definitely be very very careful for there are still projects that do go into these pool two types all right um you know that's that's another story for another time. For example, Cream, I did go into pool two because I feel like their project, they're moving at such a insane speed that I do want to have exposure to Cream. So it's like an on, it's a it's a decision that I made, right? It's a it's a conscious decision that okay, look, I like what they're doing. That's fine, right? And and to be fair, right now, like their APY isn't as crazy. Like before it was like a thousand percent APY, which was insane, right? That means it's 10 extra money every few months, right? Every not, not every, every year if it's a thousand percent. But um this is a case where you have to make the conscious decision of whether or not you want that sort of exposure and then decide for that. Decide for yourself. All right um that's pretty much the rant on everything oh the last one is for nest farming so i'm also doing a little bit of nest farming as well and this is actually a lot more strategic it's like you actually have to be a lot more conscious of what you're doing when you're nest farming so for example when you're nest farming you're actually giving a you're actually providing value by giving data of how much a cryptocurrency costs so you can say look 
when you start mining, you, you provide the, the Wi-Fi price there. So you can provide a Wi-Fi ETH price, price like maybe like this. Um, and then you stake your coins down to prove it. I think that's something super interesting. You can see that someone just started mining. And in fact, there's a lot more miners on Wi-Fi. This, um, damn, that's, that's an annoying. I was like, I was farming this on Saturday and there weren't as many people farming it, but it seems like a lot of people are farming in Wi-Fi now. So I guess the secret's out. Huh, interesting. I'll have to check up everything there. But yeah, so kind of like, Farming here, like quotation mining or quotation yield farming is a very different play. But the interesting part of this is that you're providing value to the blockchain as well. So anyways. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Anyways, we got the, do you know the power of many? So many was the other airdrop that came after few i'm just gonna face palm on that one it's like people got busted for few oh tick not good it's a pump and dump execution and then met people just immediately jump on many too I'm like anyways that's crypto for you guys that's crypto for you guys so um i would say guys um yeah on the live chat just be very careful let's let's have the rule where you declare entry price again and blah 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 um, we got Magic Turtles says leaked the alpha. Ha 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 ha. Well, let's talk lastly about Flamingo. Uh, Flamingo was something that I did touch over the weekend. Um, so Flamingo Finance is essentially yield farming on Neo, and they're doing cross chain. So cross chain right here, where you have basically you have an Ethereum. You basically connect your MetaMask here to deposit your Ethereum assets, whether it's ETH, wrapped ETH, wrapped BDC, USDT, or the Uniswap pool, you deposit it. You've, okay, so you deposit it once, you convert it to F ETH, then you deposit again to mint the N ETH, then you go on to the wrapper side to convert the N ETH onto the NEO blockchain to get PNW ETH, and then you can go to Vault V2 and stake it on to earn your Flamingo. Yeah, it sounds like a mouthful. It is a mouthful. I did try this over the weekend. Um, so far, because um, Flamingo hasn't been launched yet, at, um, the, you can start mining it, but we don't know the value of the currency. So right now, so far, there's no market for it, but that's another way to yield form. Uh, it uses NEO. So I think there was a lot of NEO fans that just jumped onto this and the amount of value locked is insane. So I think there was a comment just now about like the insane amount of value locked on it. And yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we got Crypto Graham just filling on the um, many things. So. Uh, Crypto Graham, your tweet about many before Sam did, where's their credit? So many was a joke, right? Like, like I think I actually saw Sam's joke before I said it. But anyways, I was like, oh, there's a few, a few is a bunch of scammers. They're all pumping. They're all trying to pump and dump a coin. Many understand this. And this is a part time before many actually launched as a coin. And now many is a scam. So I'm like, well, not a scam. I mean, it could be something, but it's like, it's to a point where uh like it's just so much speculation in the space this is crazy right so you know that's life that is life uh, um current sky asks do you think these farming systems are all developed by the same dev slash group of dev whatever their name no um the reason why farming took off so quickly was because developers realized how powerful it was to be able to distribute coins to a community via yield farming. So I would say it's like a, it's an upgraded form of airdrops, right? Because back in 2017, airdrops were very popular. People just gave out coins for free. Here, here's a bunch of free coins, airdrop them to you, have fun. But the problem was, was that people started to just catch on. They didn't become a community, right? They just took those free coins, when a coin launch, dumped it on the market, causing damage to the project. So they didn't, they didn't really care about the project, right? That was what happened in 2017. So that was a bad way of distributing free coins. Right now, why yield farming is so popular is because it's another way of distributing coins. It basically says, all right, we're gonna give these coins out to you for free, but you gotta commit something forward. 
right? The, like you got to commit some capital. You got to commit some money or you want to provide some liquidity to a pool. You got to do a functionality. And this is why all of a sudden yield farming took off is because this was a better way to engage and distribute coins. It's massively unfair because the people who have more money right get more but it turns out that the people who have more money in this space the more people who have more capital to start farming they speak louder they be they're most likely either a fund so they have lots of money but they also have influence so they can show it to other funds or they're just a big group of like a chad farmer or a chad yo farmer and they also have influence too so it just it turns out to be the case where if you distribute coins for free to people who have power they show it harder. So it sounds incredibly unfair. Uh, and I, I spent a while trying to reconcile that too, because technically if you wanna distribute coins, you should distribute to as many people as possible and be as fair as possible. But it turned out to be the case that yield farming, the unfairness of it became a bigger advantage. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's why um, yield farming became very popular. That's why because everyone did it, and then now you know NFT farming and uh, all that jazz is coming into play. But you know that's kind of the world, right? So we'll probably wrap up this um, stream right here. I think a little, <laughs> I think we all know here that um, you know in this whole NFT craze, uh, I'm gonna get my wallet out. So there's two ways to farm e NFTs, right? So. I was part of the NFT game for a long, long time, actually. So we have the engine-based non-fungible tokens. These are all the way from last year and the year before. So I've created these and I started giving these out for the live stream. So if you guys have an engine wallet, um, I'll still keep these out for free. That's what I feel like is the, the, the way I've been doing it for a long time. So these are the box mining ones. I think I'm going to, I'm going to run out soon. I have to be careful, but well, let's give away two of these for free. You need an engine wallet first because, well, they're ERC 1155 wallets. And the best thing is they also have 50 engine side. So you can, if you don't like them, you can just melt them down to become the engine anyways. So anyways, um, this can be put up and there's an engine marketplace. We can sell them and trade them. And also, if you guys are interested, I'm looking into wearables and all the other NFT stuff as well. So I'll do a little bit more discussion on that. I'll try to make more videos this week. Um, Oh, I always say it as I try, but I always get too busy in the, um, along the way. But anyways, that's the current case. Um, if you want one, please do type your ERC-1155 address, basically your Ethereum address. So type in your Ethereum address, smash, smashed up in chat. I'll give away two today as well, and I'll just try to be as random as possible, as possible. Um, okay, we got, I've got a question too. So whilst you guys are smash, uh, throwing in down your ETH wallets, I have a good question from CryptoRx. He says, hi, Box. I have a small bag of unused BNB dash dot. I like to farm on PancakeSwap like you. How do you move non-ERC tokens to MetaMask using BSC? It's a very, very good question. So basically, um, I forgot to talk about this almost, but Binance Swap, Pancake Swap is one of the farms I'm into right now. And Pancake Swap, the, the way it works is that it's on Binance Smart Chain. So it's not on Ethereum. So you can use MetaMask, but um, it's not. So this is Pancake Swap. Uh, CZ tweeted about it, it became like it became crazy after that. But how it works is that you need to switch your network to the Binance Smart Chain. And how to get assets on the Binance Smart Chain, the easiest way I found it for myself was if I'm on, if I'm on Ethereum and I already have, say, DOT or, say, um, an ERC-20 asset, I always transfer it to my Binance account and then withdraw it as a BSC asset. It's a pain in the ass. You literally have to use Binance to deposit and then withdraw onto the Binance Smart Chain. Um, note that Binance Smart Chain has the same address if you're using MetaMask, but it's an entirely different network. So just be very clear and careful about that. And uh, the best way I found to just transfer assets was just deposit to Binance and pull it out again. So yes, um, on PancakeSwap, I am on the .bnb 
Um, so you roughly get, I think, yeah, it's like 20, 200 something percent yield here for dot BNB as free alpha leak for you guys. Um, it's because I own a little bit of dot now. I also own a little bit of band ADA. So farming on BNB chain, the, the best part about BNB chain is, um, not BNB chain, BSC, Binance Smart Chain, is that fees are around five cents. So it's very, very easy to kind of move in and out of positions on Binance Smart Chain. All right, let's pick up some, um, let's give some NFTs out. So first of all, let's get Steven, Steven Nagel. Steven Nagel, here we go. Well, we'll post that, we'll post your address on here and then we will do uh, another one soon. Steven Nagel, and let's go to the end. Let's see, scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, let's see. We got Max Picks as well. So, Max Picks, congrats. And yeah, we did it kind of random today. But, anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's giveaway. Um, we got, thank you guys. Uh, we'll do some more. We'll do some more. Like, I'll try to do this in a more organized fashion. So, we'll just like, you know, stay tuned on this channel. Make sure you're a subscriber. Make sure you smash up the likes um yeah all of this is helpful smash up likes <laughs> subscribe um and also when new videos come out type hashtag notification squad so i scanned through apparently i forgot to tell people this week that we have the notification squad giveaway and no one apparently forgot well i don't know either that or my my software is bugged out so um if there's any t-shirt and giveaways i'll tell them to you soon but when i scanned it earlier on today i was like well so maybe you have a good chance if you do it. I just keep forgetting. So if you want to win a t-shirt on, on any video that gets released, type hashtag notification squad. Uh, okay, last thing here. We have um, Crypto, uh, Crypto Lobster says, Hi, is the Telegram group still private? How do I join? Yes, we'll, we'll give a last um, invite for the Telegram group. And that will be it. So let me just send you guys a link up on here. And we are done. Boom. All right. So, yeah, there we go. Boom. Enough. I've got Harris Hackbar says, enough of this pancake shilling. CZ got box mining on lock. Oh my God. So angry. So angry. Guys, just relax. I've done, I've ton, talked about a million EO farms. No one's buying anyone. We're just doing it for fun or not for fun for profit rather uh, but you know it's free alpha links if you guys don't like alpha leaks feel free to not watch this channel because yeah like i'm actually been thinking of a certain amount of time where like if i share all this stuff like i get less what's the point right uh but yeah take it as a leave it if you don't like it don't <laughs> it's like free money right <laughs> if you don't want free money feel free more for me um yeah that's pretty much it uh i keep getting assets and sell them as nft assets nfts are great um you know that debate was actually pretty good like i will say i'll show this one more time the nft talk i i laid i laid it hard into yatsu and he answered the questions very very well big credits to him um it was a very good discussion nfts both i think it was very balanced on both sides um and that's the case so uh, Trey Durbin says, Michael, we believe in you. Thanks for the awesome content. Don't believe in me. Believe in yourself, man. I think that's the key here. You got to do your own diligence, do DD. This, a lot of this is actually my personal kind of um, like uh, journey through this whole yield farming space. None of it's financial advice. But if I share something and you guys find it cool, you know, that's great, right? So that's pretty cool. Thanks. So I think that's pretty much for today's episode, guys. Um, there's not too much to talk about, not too much action, but this week we're going to do a few things. We're going to interview a few more projects. Um, I still have this on my desk. I still want it. I, this is something I really wanted, and I, I'm almost on my way to reviewing the, uh, the Plutus card and talking to the team about what they're doing. I think the key now is to get more people into crypto. I think that's something that's been gradually solved i just had a call with swiss board last week as well which is great um they're doing quite a lot to get more and more people into crypto so if also on that note as well if you guys have people who want to 
get into crypto and buy crypto i've always been talking about chris swiss borg a lot as well reason being is because it's actually quite easy and also i got a referral link for that too so i know i gotta monetize somehow right but um the kind of cool thing is right now like we're to a point where we're doing a lot of the unimaginable which is the fact that well um you can let me just type this in before i'm an idiot okay so that's my referral link. I don't show too much stuff, but if you do want to be part and tell people about how to get into crypto, Swissborg is actually quite good at doing so because you have a basically an app which can use and buy crypto without any spread, which is kind of insane. So I've been actually switching to that a lot more now where they do have Hong Kong bank accounts. I can basically enter my Hong Kong bank account into it and then I can just do like Bitcoin to uh, Hong Kong D and be able to swap in and out pretty easily and that's been a lot of focus this week as well um just basically gateways to get people into crypto i think we're right at the next big wave right now uh with the political mess the way it is i feel like we need gateways for people to get into crypto i feel like DeFi was a situation where people who were already in crypto or already in eve or whatever they jump in and they, were, they became very, very active it reanimated a lot of existing crypto people but new ways to get inside whether it's swiss borg whether it's merchants acceptance with you uh you trust this is like huge huge territory that we need to start moving on not just nfts i think nfts is getting enough attention we got artists coming on board but artists and games coming on board but we also have the huge gateway for fiat into crypto to get people to get into the first bitcoin and i think that's kind of insane but anyways, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, CryptoZone got so angry. L-O-M-A-L, he called many a scam. Oh my God. A lot of these are scams until proven innocent, I guess, at this current point. I mean, you guys, like, you know, I feel like there's like so many people who are too so touchy and sensitive about this stuff. Like, relax, calm down, all right? If you're getting emotionally attached to all these coins, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just being a dick here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like, it's something that I try not to do. Like, I try not to get emotional about anything. Maybe it's a scam. Maybe not. Who knows? You guys like it. That's great for you. And I'm going to stop being judgy soon. I think that was a promise I made myself this year. So I'll follow my own opinion. I just feel like, Especially with many, it's it's an opportunity play, right? A lot of people got it for free. It's an opportunity play. Congrats if you have it. Tough luck if you don't have it. Whether or not it has value, yet to be proven. So there we go. Just wear your big boy pants in there. We got so many people. Many, it's not a scam. Oh. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will save though for this channel. Um, be very mindful that. You know, a lot of people chat here. We do want to um, clean uh, chat. So if you're very emotionally involved or you excessively show on this chat as well, we will start to have moderation um, procedures on here. So that's my two cents. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, <laughs> people got so riled up on this whole many thing. Um, on that note as well, let's just let one last show. We got the podcast on New episodes coming soon. That upload is on. I promise you guys it's coming soon. We also have the next um, live stream is on Friday. We're going to do more throughout this week. So make sure you smash up the thumbs up button and the notification bell and the, and the little bell thing. Make sure you do that too. That's really helpful. Um, you know, that's just life, right? So thank you guys for doing that. And just the last thing, if you guys want, also I'm going to put up the next the link for the next live stream. So let me just do that very quickly. Schedule a live stream, Let's, uh, reuse these settings, and then I'll do it for Friday. And Friday will be deep into October already, huh? That's so fast. Man, this, this week is, this month is flying, flying by, guys. Um, I feel like, you know, I, it feels like things are moving quickly and slowly at the same time, if you get what I mean. Like, so much has happened in crypto, but at the same time, Oh, so little has done this year. I feel like with coronavirus, I just put my whole life on hold, you know? Um, I don't know. That's the magic. But anyways, that's the link for next uh, next lesson. Next, not, not next, next, next session. Next live session. We'll do more throughout the week. And then we will be cool. So guys, 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you. Arigato. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading the chat, guys. Thank you so much for watching this one. Um, so many people are like, "Many is not a scam. Many is not a scam." Relax, relax, relax. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right, I riled up a lot of people now. All right, don't. All right, stay safe, folks. Have fun. Enjoy. I'm not gonna tell anyone. All right. Cheers. Bye.